welcome to the class everyone i think today is a very nice day we are all going to learn something about choreography right okay in dance choreography is the act of designing dance choreography may also refer to the design itself which is sometimes expressed by means of dance notation a choreographer is one who designs dances dance choreography is sometimes called dance composition choreography is the artistic skill or practice of designing a sequence or sequences of movement of physical bodies or their depictions to convey a meaning the meaning could be a simple expression of beauty or a complex resonant multi-layered message in choreography motion form design all come into play a choreographer is one who creates choreographies by practicing the art of choreography a process known as choreographing choreography is used in a variety of fields of which the most popular is dance and performing arts but it includes other specific fields like cheerleading cinematography gymnastics fashion shows ice skating marching bands synchronized swimming and even parades choreography is also used in video games and animated arts subsequently it is used as a term in physics and science and web and business computing in dance choreography is also known as or dance composition in fact the word choreography literally means dance writing and comes from the greek words for writing dance in the 17th and 18th centuries it did in need mean the written records of dances in the 19th and 20th centuries however the meaning shifted the written record of dance came to be known as dance notation the composition of dance is creative in the same way in which the composition of music is the notation of dance however is a work of analysis and reporting performed generally by people other than the choreographer it uses a language or a set of signs that may well not be understood by the creator of the dance but it serves a significant role in recording dance before the video camera came into being this was an important record keeping activity today however choreographies are held by the digital and wide media in respect to their archiving storage creative process During the Renaissance the dance masters of Italy taught social dances at court and probably began to invent new ones or arranged variants of known dances thus combining a creative functions with their educational ones in the 16th century dance masters at the French court so organized the floor patterns and theatrical and artistic contexts of their social dances as to initiate a choreographic form the ballet du corps In the two centuries that followed the gap between social dance and theatrical dance widened until ballet in the 19th century achieved a basically independent vocabulary the ballet master of this era the choreographer was an arranger of dance as a theatrical art staged ballet employed the same steps and movements as social dance and differed from its principally in floor arrangement and visual pro projection the giant of late 18th century choreographic art was jean georges nouveir whose work and writings made the dramatic ballet a celebrated art in this ballet incorporated mime as well as academic dances giving expression to the dance by narrative and historic contexts after norway others developed this trend in various ways marius petipa brought the spectacular classical ballet the action to its peak in such works as the sleeping beauty in which 
extended and complex suits of classical dance brought poetic and metaphorical expression to the plot. Early modern dance in the United States introduced new elements of movement and expression and in ballet the work of Michel Fokin emphasized more naturalistic styles and a more potent theatrical image than Petipa's ballet classicism. Since then choreographic forms have varied between the poles of representation and abstraction. Dance notation in the 20th century came to be considered with basic movement as well as formal dance and was assisted by the invention of new systems of abstract symbols, those of Rudolf von Laban and Rudolf Banish being the most influential. Laban notation was the first to indicate duration, fluency or intensity of movement. Today, these systems and others continue to evolve rapidly, amplified by film and videotape. Choreography evolved no less rapidly. Methods of composition vary radically. Some choreographers using their dancers' improvisations as raw material, others devising every movement prior to rehearsal, Merce Cunningham radically changed the context for choreography in his attitude to music and decor as coincidental to dance in his employment of chance methods in dance composition and organization and in his use of non-theatrical performance space. He, George Balanchine and Sir Frederick Ashton became the leading exponents of classical or abstract dance. But the later two, like Martha Graham, Leonid Messini, Jerome Robbins and others, also produced major representational works of choreography. The only absolute rules in choreography today are that it should impose order upon dance beyond the level of pure improvisation and that it should shape dance in the three dimensions of shape, space and the fourth dimension of time as well as according to the potential of the human body. Choreography first appeared in the American English Dictionary in the 1950s and the word choreographer was first used as a credit for George Balanchine in the Broadway show On Your Toes in 1936. Prior to this, stage and movie credits used phrases such as assembles staged by, dances staged by or simply dances by to denote the choreographer. Any comparison with the Western dances and Indian dances is hard because the content of our dance differs. Our folk dances have simple choreographies that reinforce the idea of the community. Thus circles or serpentine lines formed by joint hands constitute the core treatment. It represents the community that protects each other, doesn't leave anyone out and find its identity in its connections. The elements of choreography have been part of our Sastric tradition for long. The Harivansha, an important Puran of the 4th century BC says, Natakam Narantu or a play should be danced. The elements of dance predicate a choreographic character to the play. The lyrical word and music link up the different elements of the play and form the background to the dance. That is why our classical dance is called Drishya Kavya and Drishya Sangeetam. It is closely linked to the music and the poetic content. Ancient scriptures refer to dance, dancers and the art of choreography. The Rig Veda describes Ushas to be a dancing girl. There is also reference to the art of dancing and playing music upon instruments. The Atharvaveda describes that the Gandharvas, husbands of the Apsaras, Urvashi, Rambha, Tilottama and Menaka danced with Shikandi on their heads. There is no clarity about what the Shikandi is. 
in panini's ashtadhyayi there is a special sutra that refers to a nata sutra and suggests that shiladi is its author the matsya purana describes to dance the capacity of making the environment auspicious the natya shastra by bharat muni is the main root of all the art forms but is most associated with the arts of dance and theater the ramayana tells us how the sons of rama told their father's story using hand gestures the mahabharata refers to arjun adopting the guise of brihanala while teaching the art of dance to uttara the kama sutra refers to the 64 arts including dancing singing and acting many sanskrit works regarded the art of dance and of drama as one and the same a study of the natya shastra helps us understand different elements of dance including choreography the vrittis the angaharas karanas the abhinaya mandalas mudras rechakas brahmaris charis utplavanas the balance between the uddatha that is powerful and sukumara graceful aspects of dance all contribute to the choreographic capacities iconic scholar of dance and indian arts dr kapila vatsan while writing about dance movements links it to the realization that she had about indian dance being the most cherished expression of the integrated vision of the cosmology philosophy and the idea of indian arts and culture and the laws of movement in particular thus in her view dance has been studied in the backdrop of disciplines that appear far off for instance by integrating disciplines as far apart as the fields of metaphysics speculative thought and ritual and reading a multi-layered concurrency of these disciplines with reference to the place of the human body in the cosmos the symbolization of the square and the circle watson was harking back to powerful early imageries drawn from fields that had not been seen in reference to dance only an investigation framed on these principles would help us escape the imposition of a western framework these pervasive principles of an all permeating world view were providing a new perspective to choreography on both a micro and macro scale in the iconic work the square in the circle of indian arts kapila vatsan admits that the paradigm or metaphor of purusha located first in context of aksha is the focus this gives rise to a language of abstract geometrical forms vatsyana's speculative thought harnesses the idea of perspective imagination to produce imaginative structuring of experience this is the essence of choreography the first choreographies were ritualistic among them it was tantric practices tantra is a sanskrit word with two parts the prefix tan means to expand weave together or join while the second part tra means tool by putting this together we have tools to expand weave and join together thus the term tantra has a wide connotation originally it must have stood for knowledge which is spread tantra yete vistra yete jannanam anena that is by which knowledge is spread or developed dance has served as a route to self knowledge for centuries the ras theory made it a medium for sharing knowledge and experience with other tantric practices were of two types sadhana and upasana sadhana meant ritual practices employing yantra tantra and mudras practiced by the apt and upasana meant offering ritual dance was both upasana to please the lord and sadhana tantric sadhanas were concerned with the activation of the kundalini and its ascent through the spinal chakras 
using mantras, yantras and mudras. All creation was regarded as having manifested from the energy of sound mantra, which in turn activated matter and harnessed divine energy by creating a geometric order, which took the form of geometric cosmic diagrams, which were called yantras, that were in turn the vital tool for conducting rituals. Mantras and yantras came together with hand gestures or mudras to magnify thoughts and enhance potency to impact thought and releasing psychic energy. This obsession with organizing the thoughts to create a greater experience, thought realization etc was the origin of choreography. This is how the body is embodied from the inside to the outside. Even in solo dance, there is a tantric choreography at play, firstly with the geometric designs and then with the concentration during movement to the chakra points. Of course, solo, solo dance allows for a lot more instances creativity to enter than is permitted in what the West calls choreography. An obsession for order is a shared concern between the Western idea of choreography and which is also reflected in the colonial administration's practices by which they ordered and organized the abundance and diversity of India prior to making sense of it. It was not surprising that the first idea that came with respect to organizing the material of Sadir and the Siyatam which went on to become the Bharatanatyam of the 20th century with appropriations came during the 19th century when India had re-interfaced with colonial administration. The material was organized by the Tanjore Quartet, brothers Chenaya, Ponaya, Shivananda and Vadivelu who were members of the Maratha court of Sarfoji II. They organized the material into codified adavus and what we know today as the Bharatanatyam Markam for stage, which enjoys certain fixidity. Till then, there were no fixidities of this kind. They introduced bhakti laden grand musical and literary compositions, pancha murti kautuvams, and navasandhi kautuvams. Vadi Velu was too similarly influenced Mohiniyattam when he became one of the most valued musicologists at the court of Swati Tirunal. Thus the Tanjore Quartet appeared to be occupied in their lifetime in the process of canon information. In the wake of uncertainties of colonial interactions and the regime of competitiveness that they sued forth a ruler like Sarfoji II had to straddle two worlds, the world of his indigenous cultural inheritance and another that allowed him a privileged position of almost symmetry in his dealings with the colonial power. He achieved this with his openness to western ideas, for instance to carry forward the argument of this module, a defining aspect of choreography and composition in the western sense is the practice, notation. Indian arts have never been notated, not even music. In fact, Raga Sangeet is distinguished by the fact that it is not notated and that the Raga is created afresh each time it is sung. Now in 1803, Maharaja Sarfoji created a number of marching tunes for the Tanjore military band. These were unique and became the first musical compositions in India to be noted in the western manner. Scholar Lakshmi Subramanyam credits Tanjore, which through its court and individual musicians and dancers fashioned a reworking of a dynamic tradition that carried within itself simultaneously the seeds of classism and modernity that would help make it more attractive and accessible to new communities of performers and patrons. Thus, Preferences of the patrons often drew, drove changes in the arts and created new types of dance choreographies. According to Margaret Cousins, a 
Theosophist who established the All India Women's Conference in 1927 and who is believed to have composed the tune for the national anthem in 1919 in the presence of Ravindranath Tagore, the growth of the culture of nationalism created a demand for a national culture. This culture was not visualized as an elitist variant but was if one went by V and Bhatkande's speech delivered on the occasion of the first All India Music Conference of 1914 aimed at leading itself to mass education. Therefore, numbers were of great importance. Hence, the interest in choreographies which and symbols rather than solo renditions. This has a double benefit since solo art was stigmatized and civil work in this nationalist favor was the alternative. Any study on the issue of choreography in India must be grounded historically in the revival of Indian dance in the early 20th century. The first initiatives in choreography were directed by Ravindranath Tagore. At the time that Tagore was making his experimentations with choreography, it was unthinkable for women from good families to dance on a public platform. Though women had begun to be seen on public platforms of modernity in the form of the Nabanari, dancing was unthinkable. But a luminal space was the performance space of Jora Shanko, the Tagore household in North Calcutta. Here there was an environment of plays, music and poetry. As early as 1880, Tagore composed a dance for the song Ae Tabe Sahachari in the play Manamai written by his brother. In 1881, Tagore composed the dance of the decoits in the play Valmiki Pratibha. Thereafter, at Shanti Niketan, he first introduced dance for men and then women. He entrusted Shanti Dev Ghosh, who had been a student at Shanti Niketan and subsequently became the music and dance teacher there, attributes his awareness and skill in this direction to his experience with social dances in England when he went there for his studies. Although his UK interlude was Brief but soon he was creating dances that integrated Western and Indian sensibilities. One of the earliest performances written by Tagore and performed by women dancers was in 1888, Mayar Kela. Its performance over the next two decades bore the impress of Southeast Asian culture. Then there was dance as part of his 50th birthday celebrations in 1911 and Sharadotsav in 1914 at Shanti Niketan. By 1920, as a result of his close association of the Tripura royal family, Manipuri was being taught in Shanti Niketan. However, the environment was not very supportive of Tagore's efforts and a 1923 review of his musical play Basant Utsav was criticized by some papers for including dance in which Ravindranath, Anbanindranath, an agricultural economist Elmhurst joined in spontaneously. It was in 1926 at the request of his daughter-in-law that Tagore wrote Natir Puja, which is the story of a strong female dancer. The play and the dancing by the female court dancer was a big hit. The role was played by artist Nandalal Bose's daughter Gauri Bose who danced in a set designed by his father. Tagore also appeared on stage as Upali, a monk. Though the environment was still not supportive generally of female dancing, the presence of Tagore allied a vitrolic response. The play was featured repeatedly. Meanwhile, Tagore was centering dance increasingly in the life at Shantiniketan. In both Natir Puja and the 1927 production, Tagore used the talents of the resident Manipuri teacher Namba Kumar Singh 
Singh used a technique in Manipuri dance that is called gamak, which stays away from a word to word enchantment, choosing to suggest the theme white movements alone. Scholar Prarthana Purkayastha recognizes the gamaka as the hallmark of Shantiniketan's choreographies. Nabakumar Singh also used non-narrative dances based on the bowls of Manipuri dance. This was an example of recontextualizing actual established dances in the interest of choreography for new performers. Apart from Tagore's efforts, the efforts of dancer choreographer Uday Shankar regarded as a pioneer in this field of modern dance is very important to understand the fate of choreography in Indian dance. He is best known for creating a fusion style of dance, adapting European theatrical techniques to Indian dance techniques imbued with elements of Indian classical folk and tribal dance, which he later popularized in India, Europe and the United States in 1920s and 1930s. Uday Shankar had a broad spectrum vision. He acknowledged the immense variety and scope of expression afforded by the different classical and folk dance dramas of India and his search for a personal expression led him to incorporate different dance styles to craft his own vocabulary. He was a catalyst who initiated a renaissance in Indian arts and originated a deep interest in Indian arts, especially dance, both in India and overseas. He will be dealt with in detail in the next part.